All right, let's take you back to this story now. Action says that very first policy conference is ready to go. The three-year-old party is expected to hold the three-day conference uh, next week. That's between the 12th and the 14th of September. They had a briefing this morning about whether or not they are ready for their first conference. This is where we find our reporter, Muloko Muloto. Uh, Muloko, what exactly is Action SA saying about next week, um, you know, in terms of uh, all the documents that have to reach branches? Has this happened? Good afternoon, Masora Tlara. Well, the nascent party, Action mm. SA, will be going for to that particular con uh, policy conference for the first time since uh, it was established. And you would know it is uh, contesting the national and provincial elections for the first time since uh, they were founded. Of course, they are represented uh, in uh, some of the municipalities, including in Johannesburg, where they are the third biggest political party in terms of the numbers only after the DA and the ANC. But let's speak to Michael Beeman, who is the National Chairperson of Action SA regarding this. Michael, thank you so much for making time. Before we even get into the political issues, the doyen of South African retail, Raymond Ackerman, has transitioned to the afterlife. Your message as Action SA? Certainly a message of condolence to his family and the business community. Uh, I think certainly a titan has fallen his record in challenging the apartheid government, I think no less than 27 times to bring down consumer prices in the time of inflation in the 1980s is a stellar one, and certainly I think a loss to the business community and our condolences to his family. All right, let's talk politics now. You will be going for that particular policy conference for the first time in Ekuruleni next week. And, of course, we may not touch on all the issues that you will be discussing there because of time limits. But I want to pick on the issue of uh, crime and corruption and law and order, which are really headaches for a lot of South Africans. How are you going to approach this fight against corruption? Well, certainly, I think there has to be the political will. That's the first step. There has to be political leadership that says to the competent law enforcement agencies that you have the right to investigate. You must investigate without fear or favor, and you could do that job without fear that your own jobs will be under threat for doing so. We need to have specialized units. We need to have specialized courts. Corruption is something that requires specialization in the investigation and prosecution thereof. But also we are of the opinion that we need to start classing the crime of corruption to be in the form of some kind of treason. Because really when we have government officials and politicians who are looting the public purse at the expense of the enormous amount of issues that confront South Africans on a daily basis, we need to understand it is not just a crime against an ordinary person, it's a crime against the state. And we need to start taking it seriously. It's interesting you're mentioning uh, the issue of classifying the type of crimes and even throwing the, the, the issue of treason. Your party leader, Mr. Herman Mashaba, has always been advocating for the death penalty for serious crimes. And you as the Senate have had uh, to discuss, debate that as uh, ahead of that particular conference. What is the position there? Has he lost that particular uh, position or does it, is it going to emerge? No, no, certainly. I think what took place was a discussion where we were guided by experts and professional opinions on that particular subject. And to be fair, I don't think it was a case of winning and losing. Herman is the first to tell you that he has listened to those opinions and he's had a change of perspective. And I think the fact that we are led by somebody who listens to professional voices and expert opinions, listens to the party structures and is informed by them, is a credit to our leader. And in that regard, what people are saying very clearly is that we have a broken justice system. We also have one of the most unequal societies, the most unequal society in the world. When you bring that thing together, a death penalty in South Africa will execute innocent poor people and let go guilty wealthy people. And from that point of view, we can't have that. We've got to fix our justice system, and we don't feel this is the right way of doing it. Having said that, we are convinced that the South African government is soft on crime. And what we will be tabling is a raft of proposals that are tough on crime and tough on criminals and opens up the conversations about the rights of victims and not just perpetrators in our country. Yeah, the, he, we also had him, Mr. Mashaba, expressing uh, his unhappiness with the fact that South Africa continues to remain part of the BRICS. And he has said that should he become president of the Republic and the Action SA becomes the governing party, you will pull out South Africa from the BRICS. Is that still the position to you?
you agree with him from the Senate considering the significance of BRICS in the geopolitics? Now, I think as a political party, we've had this discussion at our Senate, and the proposal that we will be sending to our policy conference is actually going to talk about act, uh, South Africa remaining players in the international space, and that means continuing with existing uh, configurations, but also looking to strengthen our configurations around the world. I think the perspective is that the debate that has gone on in our country about whether South Africa should be pro-East or pro-West, we would like to say that South Africa should be pro-South Africa. And we want to see an international relations agenda that reflects how South Africa can benefit from our involvement in the global community. And I think that's the position that emanates forth. But certainly the concerns that the president has mentioned before are absolutely correct to talk about what kind of value are we deriving from these associations. And that's the question we need to examine. And if there's going to be a question around that kind of value, we're going to have to extract that value from within the associations rather than from outside. So in simple terms, uh, we will stay in BRICS even if you become government? Certainly. I think it's something that we would remain within the BRICS uh, group. And it's certainly something that we will debate further at the policy conference. But when you look at the configuration of countries in the BRICS group, it is certainly quite easy to start imagining as our fuel prices start to approach 25 rand to the litre, how we need to be looking at this association to benefit South Africans. And I think that's the point that Herman has constantly raised. And that's the point that we need to start drawing value from. Let's conclude then, Mike. Mike, uh, the, the, the policy conference that you'll be going into, the first one, I'm not too sure if you already had an idea of how it's going to pan out, what would be the involvement of the delegates who will be, and who are these delegates who will be coming? Will you be involving outsiders the same way you did when you held that particular meeting that decided on the establishment of the party? So we have 614 delegates that will be coming from nine provinces of the country, from 52 districts and eight metros. So we really have a scenario where structures of action is say, across the entire geography of South Africa will be represented. We've grown our membership base to over 225,000 people now, and those structures will find representation in this policy conference. Uh, they begin those journeys for the conference starting on Tuesday, and certainly it's going to be a lot of work because a policy conference isn't like a rally or an elective conference. It's a lot of discussions, it's a lot of debates, and while certainly there'll be some moments that we try and make very political and, and some perhaps more lighthearted, the focus is going to be on engagements around these policies, which will see these delegates come together, debate these issues, propose amendments, and talk about what is needed to solve these challenges. All right, Michael, that's all we have time for. Thanks for yours. Michael Beaumont, the National Chairperson of Action SA. All right, Muloko Moloto, live for us there in Johannesburg. Thank you. Let's leave it there for now.